يقرأ الفاتحة بسم الله أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي جعل الحمد مفتاحا للذكر وسببا للمزيد من فضله ودليلا على آلائه وعظمته ثم الصلاة وأتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأب القاسم المصطفى محمد صل على محمد تب القلوب ودوائها ونور أبصارها وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وهو أصدق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات ما صل على محمد وعلى محمد فضل الله فأبا عبد الله الوسين with the loudest of our voices صل على محمد وآل محمد ما صل على محمد فضل الله في ما مصائب العصر والزمان أرواحنا له الفداء صل على محمد وآل محمد Once again, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gracing us with another moment, another opportunity tonight, being the third night of the holy month of Ramadan. We ask Almighty Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to accept our humble efforts in this holy month of Ramadan. And the way we witness the first few nights of this holy month, may he make it easier for each and every one of us to witness the last night of the holy month of Ramadan. If brothers and sisters will recall very well last night, we looked at the ambitions of this world and that of hereafter. And we encourage one another, brothers and sisters, to try as much as we can in these difficult times that all of us live, to create a balance in trying to focus more on the ambitions of Akhirah so that when we depart from this world, we are all welcomed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are welcomed by the angels of Rahmah. The verse I've just quoted is a very known verse, I'm definitely sure, to most of us, if not all of us. Is from Surah Al-Mulk, verse number one and number two, where Allah Tabarak wa Taala begins by saying, "All praises belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who has the ownership of the kingdom of the earth and heaven." Then the second verse is the verse I want us to focus tonight, where Allah says. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن. He is the one who created death and the life. And immediately he outlined the philosophy of the creation of the earth or the life and death. سل ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن. Is to examine you to see who amongst us will perfect his or her deeds or action. 
Now departing from this verse, our topic of tonight will be understanding the reality of death. In other words, what is death to us? And what do you understand by death? We've seen what are the sort of ambitions I and you should have in our life. So tonight let us look at death because it's inevitable, it's a reality. I will die, you will die. And it will happen sooner or later. And what is scary is that if you look at the life today, there are so many diseases across the world. And not just disease, we are encountering a lot of mortal fujua, sudden death. You will be with a person, the next moment you will be informed the person is gone. So therefore, it is very, very important to understand what death is all about. And how do we approach death as Muslims and as believers and as lovers and followers of Ahlul Bayt? Because as I mentioned, sometimes if you look at the way we treat one another, if you go to look at our attitudes and behavior, it tells one that it's like we do not believe there is death. It's like we are in this comfort zone and there will be no death anymore. So departing from this verse, our examination will be of the following three stages. The first stage we will look at man's stages in this dunya. In other words, what are the stages we go through in this dunya? Very, very important stages. And we need to understand these stages from the Quranic perspective. And then the second stage of our examination, we will focus, inshallah, on the reality of death. And we'll look at different definitions of death from jurisprudential, philosophical, and to mystical. And then we will conclude by looking at very practical approaches or spiritual tips on how to prepare oneself to welcome death. Because if we do not prepare ourselves to welcome death and death come to us, then we're going to be in trouble. We are not going to be spared in the life of Barzakh, as we'll be explaining these things, inshallah, in the coming night. Now, let us look at our stages in this dunya. And the first verse I want to attract or draw your attention to is that very known verse again. And inshallah, I urge you, brothers, I beg you and sisters, when I mention these verses, when you have time, you go home, just cross-check these verses. Because I will not be able to unpack entirely on the verse. So I'll do some indications. When you go home and you have time, listen to the majlis and pick up those verses and check them more. Try to understand the verse holistically and try to understand the message that Allah wa ta'ala is putting across. Our first stage, Surah al muminun verse 12, 13, you go 14, you can even go up to 16. Allah simply described how we are all created. And really, if you go to look at how we are created, one should not be arrogant anymore. One should not raise his shoulders anymore. But upon all that, so many wake-up calls from Quran, so many wake-up calls from al Bayt, we still have this sickness of kibber. 
arrogance. And to me, this is one particular sickness that is destroying our communities. People every now and then are becoming more arrogant. Because of something small that they are able to reach out to that other person, they become arrogant. They speak anyhow. Look at how Allah described how I and you are created. Allah said, Your first and my first stage is clay. Thin. Thin clay. Then the second stage is the semen, is the liquid. Hence you find our beloved first Imam beautifully mentioned. I am astonished as to why the son of Adam is arrogant. Because Imam said because his beginning is something smelling. And his ending is something smelling. Your beginning and my beginning is something smelling. Allah said clay and thereafter clay is semen smelling. And one dies you put in that six feet under how many days you give it? One day, two days, three days, one week, the body decomposed. So Amir al Mumin said, Why pride? Why raising your shoulder? Who are you? And then, of course, Allah continues to say, After being this seaman, it's what? It's a clot of blood. Insan. Where is the keeper of Allah? You will expect insan to completely represent Allah with all sense of humility and humbleness. And from cloth of blood, you become a, like a lamp. And that lamp, you become like a bone. This is the reality of insan. And then in that verse, not to take long on this verse, because we have a lot of things to discuss tonight. Allah said, Thumma ansha'naahu khalkan akhar Fatabarakallahu ahsanul khaliki Allahu Akbar Allah said, after going through all this process Then ansha'naahu Khalkan akhar Then we gave it We initiated for it another creation This another creation is the reality of an insan. What is that another creation? Is the self of an insan. Your nafs. The chief component of our existence is our nafs. Hence, scholars, when they describe this, it's amazing. You go look at Surah to Shams. I want to teach Allah, brothers, please, and pay attention. You look at Surah to Shams. Allah begins by saying, Washamsi waduha. When you look at Washamsi, there is an alif, a lamb to that let a word shams. Sun. Walkamari ida tala. There is an alif lamb also the moon. Wallaili ida yakshaha. There is an alif lamb also the night. Sun. The moon, the night. The earth, the heaven. But when Allah reached nafs, Allah is not saying one nafs. He said, one nafs. Earth, heaven, the night, moon. It reached nafs. It's not saying one, it's not saying the nafs said sin. you know why you know why there is no alif lamb there it's simply because Allah wants to highlight how important nafs is in the make of insan and not just that without alif or lamb there is one of sin in Arabic, Nakira to feed the umum. 
When there is a nakira, it benefits generalization. And it's not just generalization, it also indicates to importance. But one important thing which scholars mention beautifully in Tafasir is that Allah mentioned everything that He created the sun, the moon, the day, the night. Then He said, Nafs. What does it mean? It means He created everything because of the nafs of the insult. Your reality is your nafs. What is nafs? In a simple way to go forward. If you look at insan, as we mentioned the other day, you have a body. What is the role of your body? The role of your body is to move from one point to another. And then you have an intellect. What is the role of your intellect? It analyzes. But it doesn't take decision. Intellect doesn't take decision. And then you have a ruh. This ruh, simple definition, when it is there, you live in this world. If you are not there, if it's not there, you go. But there's a very profound definition in spirituality. What is the role of nafs? Nafs is a dangerous zone. It takes decision. When I say, Haider, you are my enemy, na'udhu billah, it's my nafs. It's not my body. My intellect will analyze and tell me arrogancy is not acceptable. Undermining others is not acceptable. But then the nafs will come forward and decide for me. Today, some of us are enemies to one another, not because we do not have strong intellectual capability. It's nafs. I give an example. Today is the world shortage of knowledge. How many speakers came and sat here? Ever since this beautiful center was commissioned. World is not shortage of knowledge. World is shortage of good akhlaq. In other words, intellect is excellent. The nafs is rotten. Hence, Allah comes forward. Said, wa nafsin wa ma sawaha. I swear by nafs, Allah is saying. And the proportions given to it. What is that proportion? Surah to Shams. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَهَا That is what nafs is all about. And today you have youth. Myself, I'm a youth. Sometimes nafs takes you this side. It throws you that side. It takes you this side. It brings you this side. Allah is telling us in Quran beautifully, my dear brothers and sisters, and my dear fathers and mothers, this nafs, it has fujur, it has taqwa. In other words, your nafs can take you to Allah and your nafs can take you to shaitan. Our problem, bottom line, is our nafs. Nothing else. And Quran comes on again. Surah to Yusuf. Verse 53. Inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu. Understand the problem is the nafs. We all have knowledge. I'm just sitting reminding you only. Today we are in the world of technology. The world is full of knowledge. But the world is shortage of proper insan. Nerves are rusted, including scholars. Nerves are rusted. Allah said, La Ammara to Misu. Allah said, Wallah, your nerves will always urge you and push you to indulge in drugs. But Allah said, Look, in son, I've given you the capability. Why worry? If you are smart enough and you take heed to the teachings of Allah, what then happened? Allah said, you have the capability. Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 1 and 2. 
لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة You will have that reprimanding nafs whereby you do something wrong it draws your attention And then of course Fajr 27 makes it all clear You can get to the position of having nafs al-mutma'inna so this first point we only need to work on our nafs now look at our stage in dunya this one i mentioned in one of my discourse surah al hadid verse 20 allah comes out and said innama al hayatu dunya this is our stage in this dunya. And I want us to understand this stage. Laibun, walahwun, wazinatun, watafakhurun baynakum, watakathurun fil amwali, wala awlad. We stop there. Allah describe our stages in dunya. And inshallah, if we understand this stage, I think tonight Madlis is done. The rest will be just to put some flavor and we go home. Allah described dunya. He said, number one, I'm just going to do quick direct translation, then we come back. He said, dunya is a play. And two, Allah said, it's amusement. Three, Allah said, dunya is beauty. And four, Allah said, dunya is mutual rivalry. And five, Allah said, dunya is rivalry and competing in what? In having more wealth and having more children. Now, if Allah says, dunya is a play, what is Allah telling us? What is that? Allah is trying to highlight that there is no human being who does not love life. Tell me here, who doesn't love life? Come forward, I'll give you one million shillings. Yalla, tafadali. All of us love life. We want to live longer. We want to be successful. But... Each and every one of us, depending on our age, express our love for life differently. So when Allah says, life of this dunya is play, it's not referring to everyone. It's referring to only children up until seven years of age or so. They express their love for life by play. And all of us who have children, we know this. Children, if you take them to school at that age, or madrasa, and you don't expose them to play, you're wasting their time. You want to force a child, two, three, four years, five, six, seven, exams, writing, you are wasting your time. Allah said, إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبُونَ life of this world is a play not for everyone then Allah said two is amusement what is amusement whereby a person considers what is primary secondary and what is secondary primary this is not for children up until the age of seven these are children from seven up until 12 they express their love for life Father, you tell them something and you think it's the right thing, but they are thinking something else. Something primary, you tell them it's primary, but they like that secondary. If you have your children, just monitor that and see. The third one, Allah said, Wazina, life of this world is just beauty. Who is beauty? We are talking of teenagers up to the age of 21. They just want their father to have a beautiful car. They want the father when they go to mall to buy something nice for them. Those children, they express their life. Look at their haircut, some of them. It's just beauty. So, Lala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Yeah. 
is beauty, and that is their time, and they need to enjoy lawfully so. Then Allah goes forward, said, وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ Tafahur means what? Mutual rivalry, competition. Which age? These from 21 up until 40, like our age. I want to show I'm the best speaker. He want to say he's the best speaker. No, no, they are not speakers. He want to show I have a Timberland. The Timberland, my one, is the best one. The new iPhone just came in. It's rushing to buy. That Allah said this is how we express our love for life. Look at the last one. This is my point of departure. Allah said, وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ the last group, they are those, how do they express their love for life? They compete. But in showing what? I have more wealth. And my children are successful. You see, our community are good with that. Alhamdulillah, my children, they've gone to university. Alhamdulillah, they are successful. Mashallah, I've got how many employees. Alhamdulillah. This is part of life. Allah said that age, which age? After 40, up until Azrael comes out. You know, they, after 40 going, if you become Mose, Mose more, the more they love money. Moses will tell us. That is the nature. But there is a message Quran is trying to put across here. You look at all our fathers here, Moses, when they meet, Allah, my child, Alhamdulillah. My business, Alhamdulillah. But this age, when a person reaches 40, you know what happened? A person begins to sense danger. Danger of what? Will I make another 40 to make it 80? You ask all our fathers here and mothers. Will I make it up until 80? So because of that, what do they do? They look at the company, they look at the business, they look at the job. They start transferring it into the names of their children. They make will. They revoke the will. They add. Why? Have you ever thought of it? I am telling you, you go and think about this. They are doing so because... They know they may die, but so long as the name of the company is in the names of their children, they have it at the back of their mind, their name will continue until Qiyamah. They have it at the back of their mind, their success will continue. Allah comes forward and said, that is a fake success. Allah said, this is a fake success. The success is with Allah. Hence, let's understand the reality of death. If we understand what death is all about, then we will live peacefully in this world and will depart peacefully. What is death? When the Holy Prophet taught us, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَابٌ وَبَابُ دَارِ الْآخِرَ الْمَوْتِ Everything has an entrance. And the entry to Akhira is death. You want Jannah? So you have to die. You know men, when they talk of Uri, they get excited, by the way. Tell Uri, they get excited. But your wife is better than Huri. You want to Jannah? You have to die. But what is important is not dying, it's how you die. It's the legacy you leave behind living this world. Hence, Quran comes forward. Said, Kullu nafsin mawt. Just pay attention to this verse. Every soul will taste death. Why Allah is using the word taste? You know, if a person is healthy, 
and you give him something sweet, he enjoys it. But if the person is examined with severe fever or something, and you give him something sweet, he does not enjoy it. Death is like that. If there is nafs, is rusted, you find death very bitter. But if the nafs is pure, and it is for Allah, you find death and joy. So Allah said, Kullu nafsin You will taste it. But you know what is scary? When are we going to test it? They ask our prophets. You know what prophet said? This riwaya petrifies me. It scares me. Prophet said when he was taken from a Raj, he saw an angel standing. And that angel was holding a paper like he was writing something. Then Prophet said, I asked, who is this? Then he was told, this is Azrael. Then Rasulullah said, I approached him and asked him, are you the one who takes the soul when the time is up? Then he said to Rasulullah, I have dunya in my palm like the way when you have a coin in your palm. Then he said, every single day, I visit each and every house five times. If there is someone whose time is up, then in that process of five times, it's gone. Allah. Every day, Azrael and his forces come to your house five times. They are waiting for Allah's decree. They are waiting to be informed. Remove Sheikh Nur. They are waiting. So if insan really understand this, you will always endeavor to be a good person. Another verse of Quran comes on and said, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيِّلًا Wherever you are, if your time is up, death will come to you. Even if you are in a very deep hole. This happened during the time of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. There was a man who was sitting in the palace of Sulaiman. This man was sitting. Then Azrael appeared in the form of insan. But the moment this man saw Azrael, he realized and he began to shiver. Then this man spoke to Prophet Suleiman. Prophet Suleiman, can you help me within the twinkle of an eye to be in Hind, India? Then Suleiman made it possible for him. The moment the person disappeared, Azrael approached Suleiman. And he said, where is this man? Then he said, the man is going to India. Because Suleiman, Allah bless him with that. Then Azrael said to Suleiman, Indeed, Allah has said the truth. I've been given the mandate to remove his soul in India after one hour. Where you are, it will come to you. Whether you are ready or you are not ready, when the time is up, it will come. And what is so scary is that we do not know how is it going to come. Hence, it is important to behave well. Now let us look at death from different perspective. Jurisprudentially, they have different view of what death is all about from fake perspective. They said there is a discussion between lack of life and loss of life. Scholars discuss that in fact. Some are of the view that death is lack of life. And others are of the view that death is loss of life. Hence, when a woman got miscarried, there is a difference of opinion. After when do you make gosol? After when, when you touch, you have to, it's najasa, you have to go and clean yourself. But most of the scholars are of the view that death is lost of life. And Islam taught us, life comes to an infant in the womb of his mother after 12 weeks. So from the figure perspective, very simple, when we talk of a death, it's a loss of life. 
that this life given to us by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be a moment when Allah will take that life from us. That is a very simple de definition. But when you come to the philosophical point of view, they said when we talk of a death, death is what? This soul is removed from this material mortal body and it is placed into another body immortal. So philosophically, they said when we talk of a death, it's just if one or two steps we take place, whereby this soul is removed from this one, and then it is placed into another body. Same your form, but it's a different system altogether. The third definition, I found it to be the most important definition. That is the mystical definition of death. That what is death mystically? They said death is nothing but perfection. Death that we are all scared of is nothing but command. Death is perfection. And look at how we're going to present the takreel on how death is perfection. And if you are smart, you are clever enough as insan. Wallah, if you truly understand death is perfection, you will always work towards that. Yes, Islam said we do not wish to die. But there is dua from Al al Bayt, Ya Allah, if I live for another day and that my life will be a fruit, Allah let me live. But if you know it will not be any fruit, Allah take me. Take me. And see, Imam Amir made it very clear. When you live with people, live amongst them in such a way that when you are absent, they crave your presence. And when you die, they cry for you. So when Urafa are mystics, they said, death is a perfection. What do they mean? There is two introductions here I want us to focus on. The first one, they said that when Allah created insan, he placed some forces in you. And he created a platform for those forces to materialize. I will come back to it. Just put it at the back of your mind. The second mukaddima, they said, is the relationship between dunya and akhira. Or the relationship between before birth and after birth. They said that relationship is similar to the relationship between when a child is in the womb of his mother and when the child is outside the womb of his mother. What does it mean? What does it mean? You know, when a child is in the womb of his mother, may Allah bless our mothers. The child doesn't know any other world except that womb. He stretches his leg. He enjoys in the womb of the mother. Because he doesn't know any other world. But the moment the child arrives in this world, then the child will realize that the womb of his mother was a prison. Prison. In the womb of the mother, comfortable. Disturbing them all. Sometimes she cannot sleep. But when he arrives here, he then realizes that, no, 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 no. The womb of my mother was nothing. This is too vast. That is why there are so many interpretations of the cry of a child when he arrives. Some said the child is testifying to the oneness of Allah. And some said, no, the child is crying because of the confusion of this world. It's too big, massive. I promise you, brothers and sisters, and this is based on the traditions, that when we die, the moment Azarail comes to you, you realize that this dunya is a prison and Akhira is so vast than dunya. You will realize that dunya is narrow. There is nothing here. You cannot rely on it. Amir al Mumin said, Gari, Gairi. Don't deceive me, deceive someone else, not me, Ali. Because I will divorce you three times. Because Aishu ki hakir. Because your life is misery, dunya. Misery. Why misery? Today you are happy, the next day headache. 
Today you break even, the next day you lose. So when we go to Akhira, Wallah, we will realize that, oh, it's too big, it's advanced. Dunya is nothing. You remember that tradition of Rasulullah? Dunya is a prison for believers. But now the same thing. When a child is in the womb of his mom, Allah provided a child with certain forces. But he was not able to demonstrate those forces in the womb. He only demonstrates that in this dunya. That is the two ribs. You know, a child in the womb of his mother had two ribs. But those ribs were not working properly. They would start working dunya. The same thing when I and you are in this dunya, we have certain potential. This is what is really very important. And this to me is the climax of tonight's discussion. That we have a potential to see the reality. But because of the veils we put, we don't see those reality. But I promise you, the moment we die, we will begin to see those realities one after the other. What are those realities? That is what makes mouth scary. We are all travelers. To your wife, you are a stranger. To your husband, you are a stranger. Wallah. We are travelers, believe me or not. We are on transit hall. The body who is smart and understand is on transit, you cool off, you become humble. When we go there, there are three things that we will witness, the reality. It's just that when a person dies, he doesn't come back and tell us. But inshallah, in one of the nights, I will explain the relationship between those in Barza and those in Dunya. You know the first thing we see? Quran said, Laka dukunta fi gaflatin min hada. Fakashifna anka gitaak. Fabasaru kadiyahuma hadid. Now you, you are dead. Allah said, Kunta fi gaflatin min hada. You've forgotten this long time. But now we have given you the eyes to see. When Azarail comes, the first thing you see is Azrael. You will see the angel with your naked eye. Every single person will see angel. Wallah. Quran, not me. Quran is saying not me. And seeing the angel is of different forms. Let's wake up and be good people. Just be good in sun. Correct your akhlaq. Correct your behavior. Treat each other as well. Don't be arrogant. Don't let pride take you. Poleni sana. Take it easy. Take it easy, insan. First thing, wallah, you'll see angel. Two forms. One form, if you are a truly believer. Are you true Shia of Ali? I don't. Are you really true Shia of Ali? You judge it yourself. Are you truly following Ali ibn Abi Talib? When Ali said, My Shia, Al Mutahabuna Filla, Al Mutazawiruna Fi Ihya Amarina, Sil Muliman Khalat. Amir said, My Shia, they love one another because of me, Ali. Segregations in our communities. Segregations. Segregations. Muslims. I'm not talking about Shia. Muslims. High Iraqis, low Iraqis. Imams and my Shia, wherever they are, and whoever they interact with, that person finds comfort with them. First, we will see angels. If you are a true believer, then you don't have a problem. When angel come, relaxation. What does Allah say in Quran? Surah Al-Fusilat 30-31. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِقَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَخْزَمُوا 
وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم الله أكبر If you are a true believer true Shiani Ali when your time is up when your loved ones are around you وكيل من راك وظن أنه الفراق والتفت الساق بالساق you pulling the leg that side throwing the leg this side eyes are wide open food is not test anymore tasteful anymore angels will come because you are a good believer your heart is clean Allah said those that call you Rabbun Allah ثم استكاموا they don't just say we are believers but they are steadfast youth you have energy be steadfast Use this time wisely. Reach to Allah at this age. Use the energy. Use the mind given to you by Allah. Reach to Allah. When the time comes, you will see angel. But what will the angel see? نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We are your company in this dunya and akhira. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ you will have whatever your soul and your heart requires. Nuzlan min gafuri rahim. Now you are going, but come slowly. Or oh, stay, or oh, stay. But this or oh, stay, stay. Min gafuri rahim. From Allah gafur. You are forgiven. Don't worry. You are a true servant of Allah. You were not monophic. But there is another verse. Surah Al-Nisa 97. الذين توفاهم الملائكة ظالمي أنفسهم. Those when Azrael come to them to remove their soul, but they are unjust to themselves. You know that moment people will chew their fingers. Not only Kiama. People will chew their fingers. So the first thing of the reality of them is that it's a Kamal, it's perfection. But you will see angel. You're gonna see Azarail. Don't you see when somebody that mouth wide open, uh, he seen some shocks. May Allah save us and protect us. May Allah protect our iman. Second thing which will happen is the removal of the soul. See, Malaika is not a joker. But it will depend on how you're going to receive it. I'm, I'm going to, I don't know. Allah, we are all trying. We are all trying. We are all masking to Allah. I'm making this discourse because I want us to think. I want us to think. I want us to realize what Allah wants us to be. Removal of the soul is very painful. Very painful. You see, when our second imam was leaving this world, he was crying. He said, I'm worried of two things. Imam Hassan Mustafa. He said, Atakhawwafu alaykum khislatayn. I'm worried of two things for you people. Firaqul ahibba wa hawlil muttali'a. Because now, your wife is standing there, your son is standing there, your bosom friends are standing there. You're looking at your world, the mansions you have built, the cars you have. You know, that itself is a pain. It's not a joke. I've worked tirelessly for this. And I'm living it. Yes, my son is going to inherit, but it's a pain. I studied up to PhD level. And I'm going. It's a pain. Imam Hassan said, that one, Firaqul Ahibba, separation from the lovers is a pain. But Wahawilil Muttaleh, and what will happen after here is even more painful. So the second level is what? The removal, Ihtidar, which we'll discuss more, inshallah. It's not easy. We have a rewire which says that the pain of the removal of the soul will remain with people up until the time they enter Jannah. Some 
describe some people how will their body be removed it's like somebody come holding your skin and peeling it a removal of the soul is not a joke so we need to be good my dear brothers and sisters that is why the narration beautifully mentioned that the holy prophets they went to the grave cemetery to bury someone all of a sudden, prophet stopped. And he was holding a stick. And was hitting the stick on the ground. Then he kept quiet. Then tears began to overflow from his eyes. Tears. Then he said to them, Ista'idu min awabil qabr. Oh, my people seek refuge from the punishment of grave. Grave. It's not a joke. We'll discuss that. Grave is not a joke, man. You just have to be good. Be good. I'm repeating this. Just be good. If you are good, you sort it. But to be good also is easier said than done. Then Rasulullah said to them, if you are a good person and you are to depart, God Almighty will command the angels several times Removal is painful, but make it more easier for these servants. But if there's a man who don't care, who don't care, you see, Allah loves us so much. These things is all out of the love Allah has for us. We've just recited in Dua 50, isn't it? <laughs> Look, I've never seen the most generous Lord to his worst servant than you, Allah. Because Tadu'uni for Walia, you call me Nur, come to Salah, come to Quran. Then I turn away from you, Allah. Every second, Allah, you show me love, but in return, every second, I show hatred. Allah, you are showing that affection, but I don't pay attention. It's like I have something to claim from you, Allah. Allah is an bicharu. Then, look, Imam said, That does not stop you, Allah, to show rahma on me. The third, then we conclude. When you are dying, narration says, one last painful moment is when your soul is removed going. You know what happened? The soul is going to be removed. Narration says all those who are in the life of Barzakh, their soul will be standing to welcome that new soul. And then they will ask a question. Which soul is this soul? If it's a mu'min, the smell is like utter and they will welcome it. But they say, the wife said, if it's a bad person, they said it's smelling. Bad smell. So the soul to be welcome in Dar al Akhirah in Barzakh is another mission. Now, in conclusion, what practical matters do we have to put in place so that we will always be prepared for death? Number one. Number one. We should always behave. Especially when it comes to our relationship to Ibadah. As if that is the last Ibadah of our life. Fasalli salatan muwadda'ah, Imam said. Pray today. You pray as if it's a farewell salah. You know what sometimes the steps is that? You know when we fast... And it's iftar time. 
Imam is be rush to pray fast. Definitely, Imam cannot also do too much slow. You have to consider the weakest link. That's true. But what is happening? You see, our community, if Imam is a bit slow, he's been given the command from above. Kutuba of Prophet read. Warfa'u idea kum in the awkat is salah. Fa innaha afdal al awkat. Yandurullahu al ibad. Allah said during the time of salah, raise up your hands high up in Ramadan. Because these are the best moments to ask Allah. So, number one practical method. Every act of worship you do, do as if that is the last one. Yes, Riwaya said, accumulate this dunya as if you are remaining forever. And pray very well as if you are dying the next day. Create a balance. That's number one. Number two, sincere tauba. Constant make tauba. Tauba, when Rasulullah mentioned in the khutbah, Anfusakum maruhunatun bi a'amalikum Fafukkuha bi istighfarikum Your self, your nafs Are imprisoned With your deeds and action A lock it with istighfar Constant istighfar Not this istighfar of the mouth You have to do proper istighfar That's number two Three Ensure that every day and night before you sleep, Ya Allah, there is nobody's right on your shoulder which you have eaten wrongly. How many people's money you've eaten? How many people you have gossiped about? Before you go to bed, ensure that you do something about it. Because sleeping is a smaller death. When we sleep at night, our soul goes around. Surah so Zumar made it very clear, verse 42. Our souls goes around. So when we go to bed, Allah said, some of their time will be up. So they will proceed to Barza. And those who are fortunate enough, the soul will come back to the body and the next day they will rise up. Hey, said Rasulullah, whenever we woke up in the morning, said Alhamdulillah, Allah ahayana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin. So number two, hack of people. But not only hack of people, hukuku shari'i, khums, khums, zaka, hukuku shari'i, fitra, hadiyah, that you owe, pay it back. Pay it back. Every night before you sleep, ensure that something is done. Number four. Judge yourself now and then. Judge yourself. Ask yourself, am I, leading, am I living up to expectation? Or I'm not living up to expectation? Ask yourself. And that should help you to be able to prepare for death whenever it comes. So I leave you with this. Go and think about it. Because Prophet said, there are groups of people in their lives of Barzakh, they will be provided with divine shade. Try to be one of them. Try. Number one, Imamun Adil, just leader. All leaders here. A leader doesn't mean Jamaat leader. Even your work, you are a leader. Home, you are a leader. Are you fair to people who are under you? You give children to recite Quran. Are you fair in that, or you choose the children of rich people? Imamun Adil, just leader. Two, Shabun Nasha'afi Ibadati Rabbah. A youth who grows in the love of Allah. 
a youth adhering to his salah, adhering to the calling of Al Bayt, youth. Most of people sitting in the middle are youth. Your love for Allah, your love for Quran, your love for Al Bayt is what will provide that shade for you. Youth. Majority here are youth. Don't waste your time. Time is valuable. Time is money. Use it wisely. And a man, a gentleman whose heart is connected to the mosque. Wherever he is, he's thinking of the mosque. He wants to come to pray to the mosque. وَرَجُلَانِ تَحَابَّ فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ And two people, they love one another not because of anything, but because of Allah. And they remain in that love of Allah until death do them apart. وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خُفِيَةً فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنًا And the one who remembers Allah in hidden until he cries and the face changes. And the last one, the one who sees haram, and he said, Inni akhaf Allah. And the Rasul concluded by saying, The one who gives sadaqah with the right hand, and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand they give. It's a metaphor. Today, some of us, when we do charity to the welfare people, we brag to them. We interview them like the interview of going to Jannah. We open people naked, then we want to help them. May Allah forgive us, inshallah. We conclude by remembering Bibi Fatima, alayhi salatu was salam. Because Bibi Fatima taught us to be sincere in whatever we do. And she taught us to be patient of every examination that Allah brings to us. But narration says the henchman came to the house of Fatima to Zahra. When they came, they called out, come and pay allegiance. Then Fatima responded, this is the house of the daughter of Rasulullah. The response was they pushed the door on Fatima. Of course, this idea of pushing the door on Fatima broke the rib of Fatima. That is why narration says, when Amir al muminin was in a process of making the ghusl of Fatima, Asma bin to Umayyad narrated, Imam began to cry and lament. He screamed. Asma said, Amir al muminin why are you crying? I've never seen you cry like this. Said Asma, as I'm busy making the ghusl of Fatima, my right hand went and touched the broken rib of Fatima. And no doubt, this broken rib of Fatima was later remembered by Imam Jafar alayhi salam. A lady was walking in the market of Banu Umayya. All of a sudden, she fell. The moment she fell, she began to say, May Allah kiss the killer of Fatima. The lady was arrested. And a gentleman saw how she was arrested. He rushed to our beloved chief Imam. He complained to Imam. He said, Ya Imam, I'm here to ask you to make dua for the release of that lady. Imam made dua, the lady was released. They brought the lady to Imam. Huh? Her response breaks the heart of the lover of Fatima Tazahara. Imam asked her, Why did you kiss the killer of Fatima when you were falling down? She said, My Imam, when I was falling down, I was falling on my river. And that was the moment I realized the pain Fatima Tazara went through. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Wa sayya'lamu alladhina zalamu ayyamun kalabin yankalibun. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. We ask Allah to grant us the tawfiq in this holy month of Ramadan. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are trying our level best. We don't claim to be perfect. But Allah, we ask you continue to inspire us for us to continue to be good people, inshallah. Ya Allah, where we make mistakes in this holy month of Ramadan, amend those mistakes on our behalf. 
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهر